Hi guys, welcome to our video on balancing chemical equations for unit 4. You'll need your notes, uh, which is pen and paper, and use your um, have your unit 4 packet with you. If you don't, that's fine as well. So in this lesson, we'll go through balancing chemical equations. Um, we'll add the small whole number coefficient and take the sum of a whole number coefficient as well. We'll explain what all that is. So here we have a chemical reaction. We have N2 gas plus H2 gas produces NH3 gas. We know from the law of conservation of mass that the mass of the reactants should equal the mass of the products. We should have the same number of molecules on each side. So we'll go ahead and count up how many molecules of N2 and H2 we have. So I'm going to do kind of like an inventory. Um, so I'm going to do N and H, and then draw a line right over here where the arrow is, kind of right there, and also write down an N and H. So on the left-hand side, I'll figure out how many NNHs I have for my reactants and how many NNHs I have for my products. So counting them up, I have two Ns, two Hs, and my reactants. And my products, I have one N and three Hs. So by taking this inventory, I figured out that I don't have the same number of nitrogens and hydrogens on each side. So this is not a balanced chemical equation. It doesn't follow the law of conservation of mass. So what I could do here is actually add in some more NH3, because I know I'm missing that on the left hand, on the right hand side, excuse me. So I can do my inventory. And on the right hand side, I have N and H. So now I have two nitrogens, a nitrogen here and there. So two nitrogens. Now I have to figure out how many H's I have. So I can take my coefficient, which is the big number in front, just like it is in math class, and multiply that by how many hydrogens I have. So here I have six hydrogens. I'm still not balanced. I still don't have the same number of hydrogens on each side, even though my nitrogens are the same. So now I need to add some more hydrogens in. So if we count them up, I'll have two nitrogens, and I have one, two, three, four, five, six hydrogens, and I can tell that by having three times the two right there. Then I will kind of draw that line there. I still have two nitrogens on the right-hand side and six hydrogens on the right-hand side as well. So now, since my nitrogens match up and my hydrogens match up, I have a balanced chemical equation. I've used those coefficients, so those big numbers in the front of the formula, to help me figure out or to actually balance my equation. So let's do this for iron and oxygen producing iron um, 3 oxide. I know it's iron 3 oxide because Oxygen has an oxidation state of negative 2, and negative 2, and to kind of do reverse crisscross, that 2 was right there, so iron must have been plus 3. All right, so I'll count up the number of irons and nitrogen, so I'll do my inventory. And iron and oxygen's over here. So I have one iron, two oxygen. So remember, oxygen is a diatomic molecule, or one of our Hunkelbrifts. Those two oxygens will stay together. On the right-hand side, I have two irons and one, two, three hydrogen, or excuse me, three oxygens. I'm still not balanced. I still don't have the same number of irons and oxygens on each side. So now I'll add some coefficients in front of the equations. So I can add in here, I have oops, two irons on the left-hand side and two irons on the right. And we'll look, take a look at the oxygens. I have two on the left, and then one, two, three on the right. So I still need to make sure that I have the same number on each side. So I could go ahead and add in some more oxygens. And I'll do that by adding or increasing the coefficients on both sides, the reactants and the products. So I know that I have one, two, three, four, five, six oxygens here by adding that three in front of that oxygen. And then on the right hand side I have also six oxygens. But now my irons aren't balanced. So I have Fe, two irons here, and now I have four irons over here even though my oxygens are all balanced. So to go from, to increase the number of irons on the left hand side, I know I need a total of 4, so I can actually go ahead and put a 4 as my coefficient right there for iron. So to balance these chemical equations, I'm just adding in those coefficients, and I have 1, 2, 3, 4 irons on the left-hand side, 1, 2, 3, 4 irons on the right-hand side, 
and then six oxygens on the left, and then one, two, three, four, five, six oxygens on the right hand side. So we won't always have those particle diagrams to help us, um, but actually it's just easy enough to do it on with our own chemical equation. So wherever that arrow is, I'm going to draw a, horse, or excuse me, a vertical line down just to kind of show where my reactants versus my products are. Then I'm going to go ahead and write down which elements I have on the left-hand side, and I should have the same elements on the right-hand side. So I have a Cu and O in the reactants, so I'll put Cu and O. I'm going to keep them in the same order. I'm not going to put O first on the right-hand side just because it makes it more visually appealing. It's easier for you guys to kind of get that. So I'll take my inventory. I have one copper on the left-hand side, two oxygens on the right, or excuse me, on the left-hand side, and on the copper on the right-hand side for my products, I have one copper, one oxygen. So my coppers are balanced, I have the same number on each side, but my oxygens aren't going to be the same. So I can go ahead and put a coefficient of 2 in front of the uh, CuO so that I can increase the number of oxygens. I'll retake my inventory for the entire formula. So now I have two coppers and two oxygens, because that big number, it's like math class, where if you have two xy, I know I have two x's and two y's. Same thing here. If you need to think of this as being in parentheses, feel free to, but it's showing you that there's two coppers and two oxygens on the right-hand side. Now, I know my oxygens are balanced, but my coppers aren't. So I can go ahead and put a two in front of this copper in order to show that they're that it's balanced. So let me go ahead and kind of clear some stuff up. There we go. And now you can see that we have a balanced chemical equation of 2Cu plus O2 produces 2CuO. One of the equations, excuse me, one of the multiple choice or short response questions you might be asked is take the sum of the whole number coefficients. So the sum, of course, we know that we're adding, and whole number, meaning that it's not going to be a half or a third of anything, um, and the coefficients are just the big numbers in the front. So go ahead and add up the number, uh, the coefficients in the front. So just double check. I know I have two in here. This is where they're trying to trick you. In front of the oxygen, there's nothing listed there, so it's an imaginary one. And then I have two in front of the CuO. So it's really two plus one plus two. So I should have five for my sum of the whole number coefficient. Also, say for example, when we were going through and we, if we were to do this equation, we had four, let's go back, four, two, and four. I know I can reduce down four, two, and four to two, one, and two. So we want the whole number coefficients or the lowest ratio of the whole number coefficients. Let's go ahead and do this one. First, draw your line. Then take your inventory. So F, E, and S on both sides. On the left-hand side, I have one F, E, and I have eight S's. Right-hand side, I have one F, E, and one S. So my irons are balanced, but my sulfurs are not. I know I need to have a total of eight sulfurs on the right-hand side, so I can actually go ahead and put a co- and there's only one sulfur on the right-hand side right now. I can go ahead and put a coefficient of eight on the right-hand side to show that there will be eight sulfurs. I also need to make sure I go through and um, balance the rest of it or take inventory of the rest of it. So there's eight irons and eight sulfurs. So my sulfurs are fine. Now I go back through to my irons. I have one iron on the left-hand side, one, or excuse me, eight on the right-hand side. So I can put a coefficient of eight in front of that iron to make this eight. So now my coefficients for my iron are the same, and it so happens that my coefficients for the sulfur um, are each going to be eight as well. So to take the sum of the whole number coefficient, it's going to be your eight plus the imaginary one that's listed right there, and the eight. So my sum would be um, 17. For this one, we have Al plus O2 produces Al2O3. So again, we will go ahead and take our inventory. 
I have one aluminum and two oxygens on the left hand side and I have two aluminums and three oxygens on the right hand side. So I know I'm not balanced. I know I need to have a total of um, or excuse me, the same number of aluminums on each side and the same number of oxygens on each side. So here's where it kind of gets a little tricky um, or you can actually just go ahead and use some kind of basic math knowledge for yourself. I know I can only increase the number of oxygens by two because this is a diatomic molecule and I can only go up by twos. This one over here I can only go up by threes for oxygen. So I'm going to find the lowest, um, let's see, common number between two and three which would end up being 6. So I want to get the number of oxygens to be 6 on the left hand side. So I put a 3 right here, which makes that a 6. And on the right hand side I want this to be 6, so I can make this a 2. This also changes the number of aluminum to be 4 on the right hand side. So on the left I've put, I have to put a coefficient of 4 to make sure that these two are balanced. And I always go back through, double check, um, and if you find that you're kind of going up a little bit higher, again, so say for example this was 8, 6, and 4 as the coefficients, you can reduce the 8, 6, and 4 by 2's to get to your 4, 3, and 2's. So we want the lowest whole number ratio. Here we have C5H12 plus O2 produces CO2 and H2O. We know we have a hydrocarbon and an oxygen and producing CO2 and water, so this must be a combustion reaction. So I have C, H, and O on the left-hand side. Right-hand side, I have C, H, and O. And I'm going to keep that order the same between the two sides. So let's count up the number of carbons. On the left-hand side, I have 5. The right-hand side, I have 1. For hydrogens on the left, I have 12. And on the right, I have 2. For oxygens, I have 2 oxygens on the left. And on the right-hand side, well, I have two over here plus one over here, so I really have three oxygens on the right-hand side. So now we have to figure out how to balance these. Um, one of my words of wisdom, and I have several words of wisdoms in here, so make sure that you put this off to the side, is to start with carbon, if you have something like this. Um, kind of make your hydrogens be one of the last things that you use. So here, I can start with carbon. I know I need five total carbons on the right-hand side, so I'm going to put a coefficient of five on that CO2. This makes five carbons here. So then I have five times two oxygen, so that gives me ten oxygens over here. But then I'm going to add in this one. So now I have a total of eleven oxygens over there. So I can go back through. I know that I need to have the right-hand side be a whole number. Um, so actually, I can go ahead and even do the hydrogens right now while I'm here. So here I have 12 hydrogens and 2 hydrogens. I can actually um, kind of do my lowest common factor would be that 12. So I can multiply this by 6 to give me 12 over here. And now I'll add up all the number of oxygens. I know I had 10 oxygens from this side, or from this CO2. And I have 6 oxygens over here. So that gives me a total of 16 oxygens on the right-hand side. Now I can, since 16 can go into, um, sorry, 2 can go into 16 evenly, I know that that's a factor of 8. So I have 8 for my oxygen right here which equals 16. So to kind of get rid of some of this other stuff over here, my coefficients are a 1, and you don't need to put the 1 there, but just know that it's there in case you need to add them up. An 8, a 5, and a 6. Alright, so another word of wisdom is to check for any polyatomic ions. Polyatomic ions are from table E. I had you guys memorize them. And we see that we actually have a polyatomic ion here, one here, and another one there. If they end up being the same on each side, like so that polyatomic ion doesn't break up at all, then leave it. Leave it be. So you can actually, let's see if I'll box these in with certain colors. So here, that PO4 is PO4 on the left-hand side and PO4 on the right-hand side. So I can write out PO4. I know it's an ion, but I'll deal with that ion later. P4 
PO4. Uh, let's see, I have an NH4 here and an NH4 there. So I can keep out keep NH4. So I don't need to break them up because they're the same type on the left hand side versus the right hand side. And an OH here. And oh, well, see, I don't have necessarily an OH, but another word of wisdom. So this is now the third word of wisdom is if you have H2O, you can also write it out as H. O H. So here I actually end up having an OH right here. Right? And the only thing I haven't accounted for is just this lonely little hydrogen right there. So I'll put that up there first. Same thing here. Okay. So the reason I've done this is I haven't broken up the P and the O's is because I have that same polyatomic ion on the left hand side as I do on the right hand side. It hasn't decomposed at all. So let me kind of clear up some of this stuff. And I'll go ahead and write this as HOH. So I have three hydrogens over here and one hydrogen there. For PO4, I have one here and one PO4 there. For NH4, I have one here, and this on the right hand side, this NH4 is in parentheses. I actually have three NH4s over there. And let's take the OH. I have one OH over here, and one OH over there. So now I can take a look at my equation and try to balance it. So I can add in those coefficients for myself. And I know, kind of off the bat, I need more hydrogens on the right-hand side and more ammoniums on the left-hand side. So I can kind of play around with this. I'll start out with the ammoniums. So I have NH4, over um, one H4 on the left-hand side, three on the right-hand side. So I'm going to put a coefficient of three for NH4 here. So this shows me that I have three NH4s here. And this shows me I also have three OHs over here. So my NH4s are balanced, but my H's and my OH's aren't balanced, and that's okay, because if I look over here on the right-hand side, my H and my OH are connected with one another. So in fact, I can just put a 3 in front of the hydrogen, or excuse me, in front of the water. So I have three hydrogens, and I'll have three OH's. So now I'm balanced. I have coefficient of 1, 3, 3, and 1. So go ahead and practice this one. This one's dealing with the, um, also with the polyatomic ions. I have SO4 over here and over there. So you can keep that SO4 together. I have K, SO4, BA, and CL. Same thing on the right-hand side, and I'll write that in the same order. All right, so the left-hand side, I have two potassiums. On the right-hand side, I have one. I have one sulfate on the left-hand side and one on the right-hand side. One barium on the left-hand side, one on the right-hand side, two chlorines on the left, and one chlorine on the right. So my sulfates and my bariums are each um, the same on each side, but my potassiums and my chlorines aren't. In fact, I need uh, two potassiums and two chlorines on the right-hand side so I can actually just go ahead and put a coefficient of 2 right in front. This makes us 2 potassiums and 2 chlorines. So even though this seems like a very complicated equation or chemical equation, balancing it ended up being really easy. So to summarize, we need to follow the conservation of mass. In order to do that, we need to balance our chemical equations. We're first doing this by adding, or excuse me, taking our inventory, then adding in coefficients, taking in the inventory again, adding more coefficients, and so on and so on. We'll need to do the smallest whole number coefficients or whole number ratios. And to do that, we just want to make sure that we can't reduce our coefficients down by any more. And sometimes they might ask us for the sum of the whole number coefficients. And we just need to add up those coefficients. Don't forget to um, make sure that you put in a 1 for if you are going to add them in. We'll practice this a lot, so don't worry. Um, and you will become experts on this. Have a great day, guys. Take care.